Okay, so welcome everybody. This is part three of our series on Trinitarian Crimes Against the Word. And this is involving the deleting the words, This day I have begotten thee, from both Matthew and Luke simultaneously. And uh, we're going to give you quotes of text that show you the systematic uh, appearance of these, the, the actual words, This day I have begotten thee, uh, from the earliest church uh, all the way to uh, just prior to the point where it's being eliminated. And uh, by 4 or 5 AD, it will be removed. It will not appear in the Latin Vulgate, and it will disappear from any reproductions thereafter. Remember, the Roman Catholic Church was in charge of our Bible predominantly, and the, the Roman law and the Roman state was uh, backing them up. So uh, if they censored it, there's not much you could do. Um, anyway, so uh, anyway, please enjoy. We're going to do this in chronological order. Okay, so this is uh, starting with Clement. This is before 70 AD, and I'll show you and prove that to you. Anyway, this is his first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 36, written by Clement, a man who was a direct disciple of Apostle Peter. It says, But concerning his son, the Lord Yahweh spoke thus, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And it could be, arguably, that he's not quoting uh, the baptism account, but it tells you that in the early church, in the earliest church, this was a, a passage that was being relied upon to be about Jesus, Psalm 2, verse 7. And like I said, it doesn't actually have itself any prophetic nature. It has to be a, it has to be God quoted this to make it have any value to Jesus. You can't just pull it out of the air. So I think it really does mean he knew that that was the evidence. The apostles were declaring that Jesus was uh, told by God from heaven uh, that he was the begotten son. And how do we know that this is before 70 AD? Because we know the temple's still standing. And why do we know that? Because this epistle mentions that sacrifices were still ongoing at Jerusalem. And that means that the Jerusalem temple wasn't destroyed until 70 AD. So this has to be before then. And uh, how do we know that? In chapter 17, verses 14 to 22, Clement affirms that we must continue our offerings and sacrifices. So this is interesting. Is uh, he did not think that Christians were not going to do offerings and sacrifices. And he mentions this is not done everywhere except at Jerusalem. So I, I think that means is the only place to do it is Jerusalem, which makes sense. Hence, the date of this letter's composition must be 70 AD. And then I point you out to look at first epistle of Clement to the Corinthians, Wikipedia, and it says, quote, the internal evidence composed is that it was composed prior to 70 AD. And I think that's right. And then the next one is from uh, Clement of Alexandria. The instructor was the book he wrote, 160 AD, and this clearly referenced baptism. So let me read this. When the Lord was baptized, a voice loudly sounded from heaven as a witness to him who was beloved, quote, Thou art my beloved son, this day I have begotten thee. Clement, Christ the Educator, Father to the Church, CUA 2010, volume 23 at page 25. This next writing is by Justin. Now, he died in 165, so this is probably actually written much earlier than 165, but it's I'm putting it in that sequence. I Probably this could even be around 130 or so. This is known as the Dialogue of Justin with Tryphon, a Jew, in chapter hmm, 88. Chapter 88, wow, a lot of chapters. Justin writes about Jesus, clearly referencing, referencing the Gospels, baptism accounts, and he says this, quote, he was in the habit of working as a carpenter, this must be about Jesus, when among men, making plows and yokes, by which he taught the symbols of righteousness and an act of life. But then the Holy Ghost, and for man's sake, as I formerly stated, lighted on him in the form of a dove, and there came at the same instant from heaven a voice, which was uttered also by David when he spoke, personating Christ, what the Father would say to him, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Justin to Trifo. Justin then goes on to explain in Trifo the Jew, once more, obviously quoting the original form of Matthew 3.17 and Luke 3.22, quote, For this devil, when Jesus went up from the river Jordan at the time when the voice spake to him, Thou art my son, this day I have I begotten thee, is recorded in the memoirs of the apostles, which, by the way, he refers to this memoir of the apostles numerous times. So it was some sort of uh, document that was summarizing their 
their uh, statements or reporting about Jesus. It could be the Hebrew Matthew. No one's exactly sure. Uh, okay, it's recorded in the memoirs of the apostles to have come to him and tempted him, even so far as to say to him, Worship me. And Christ answered him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So it's talking about that he went up from the river Jordan, that's the baptism, at the time when the voice spake to him and said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And he's saying it's recorded in the memoir of the apostles. So it was already written by the time of his, so this is 165 latest, probably 130 earliest. And he's saying it's written by in the memoirs of the apostles just this way. This is very, very early. Okay, and this is Tertullian, 207 AD. And this seems to be missed by everyone. Uh, but it is, it is clearly quoting this passage, uh, and well, let's just kind of read it, and you'll see he's he's mocking and de destroying the idea that uh, is currently the essence of the Trinitarian doctrine. Sorry, everybody, this is the man who is attributed to having created the Trinitarian doctrine, but he didn't believe the Trinitarian doctrine that the Catholic Church adopted at Nicaea. He had the view that Jesus was was begotten in time, and he he did not always exist, and the Holy Spirit was uh, the other pillar of the three, you know, for the Father's on top in this triangle, and then the Holy Spirit's on a level below, and Jesus is on a level below the Father. So that that's how he envisioned, which is exactly like it would work in a pagan thing. You always have the head god, and then you have subsidiary aeons in, pa in, pan in pagan doctrine, which those serve the, the superior god. So he was trying to make a point and try to evangelize pagans by using a pagan term, and this is all in uh, Aristotle's work. The Trinity was first mentioned there in, in this articulated form. So anyway, the point is this, is he actually is destroying what we would consider the current Trinity. He says it's ridiculous. Because how how can a father talk to himself? How could he say what he said at the baptism that you know this day I've begotten? So listen, it, it'd be a good good way if you have if you're saturated with the Trinity doctrine, you're wondering how did you ever come to think this way? Listen to the logic of the man who created the term. I bid you also observe that on my side I advance the passage where the father said to the son. Now passage means it was written. And it's the Father speaking. And it's not just simply the psalm. I think he is looking at the same text that Justin's looking at. Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. If you want to believe him to be both the Father and the Son, that is, he could simultaneously, simultaneously be two persons, but each is God, show me some other passage where it is declared. The Lord said unto himself, I am my own son, today I have begotten myself. Or again, before the morning did I beget myself, and likewise, I the Lord have possessed myself in the beginning of my ways for my own works. Before all the hills, too, did I beget myself, and whatever other passages are to the same effect. Why, moreover, could God, the Lord of all things, have hesitated to speak thus of himself if the fact had been so? Brilliant analysis. He destroys everything that the uh, Trinity doctrine depends upon by just saying the, the obvious. How, do you, how can you reconcile it with reason? But according to uh, uh, the Catholic Church, you don't have to have any reason. You just believe it. it but it's, it's, it's a creed. It's not in the Bible. And the way it's been construed is, is contrary to reason. And so it can't be from God. And it's also inconsistent with uh, Psalm 2. It, there is a begotten being called the Son. Okay, and the next one is Oregon. He's from about 230 AD. He died in 254. This is his commentary on the Gospel of John, section 32, and he says the following. None of these testimonies, however, set forth distinctly the Savior's exalted birth, but when the words are addressed to him, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, this is spoken to him by God. Now, unless you're going to say that's him quoting Psalm 2, verse 7, uh, this would only make sense if he's aware of that it's spoken from heaven, and that identifies 2-7 as applicable to Jesus. Because again, as I pointed out, there's nothing prophetic about 2-7. It has to be invoked by God at some point in time to apply to and identify somebody, and he has to step out of his heavenly realm and verbally speak and tell us, and that's exactly what he does at John's baptism. Okay, so... This is an unusual quote. Let me 
set this up. This is from the 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 Didascal, Didascalia Apostolorum, uh, and what it is is this is an app. Somehow they were using an application in the mid 200s that Jesus's baptism could be replicated with us. We when we would have a baptism, they could invoke the same words over us, which is an interesting idea. I never thought about this. So, uh, but that tells you it must have been already they already had this passage in Matthew or Luke or both. And that's why they're doing the baptism this way. So listen to how it taught this to be. And this was supposedly the 12 apostles were behind the, the, the Scalia. And through whom the Lord in baptism by the imposition of hand of the bishop bore witness to each one of you and uttered his holy voice saying, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So it's interesting that the baptismal uh, formula of early Christianity was being invoked the same words that God spoke over heaven over Jesus could then be invoked over each member. We don't do that anymore, but it kind of raises the question whether maybe that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, and then a few years later came Acts of Peter and Paul. Uh, I, I don't know that we know exactly who wrote this, but it's supposed to be the Acts of the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul. That's its name. It says, quote, Him therefore to whom the Father said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. The chief priests through envy crucified. Okay, so it clearly is saying the Father said this to Jesus. Uh, and again, the, the, the words in Psalm 2, verse 7, don't, unless you know it happened, in, in reality, you can't just say this applies to him. You have to have proof. And, and, and other than the God speaking, you would never say it, it definitely applies to him. Uh, this is in the anti seem Fathers, Volume 8. Next is Methodius from 280 AD. He died in 311. He was from Anatolia, Turkey in Part 9, Chapter 9, in his work called The Banquet of the Ten Virgins, or Concerning Chastity, is similarly quoting the original baptism of Jesus' account when we read the following. Now, in perfect agreement and correspondence, correspondence correspondence with what has been said seems to be this which was spoken by the father from above to christ when he came to be baptized in the water of the jordan thou art my son this day have i begotten thee anti nicene fathers banquet of temperatures so that's 280 ad it's clearly aware of it being written and he's 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 using the words baptism and he's saying it happened at the baptism okay this is uh length Lactantius, I can't ever say this right. It's uh, from 300 AD in the words of Lactantius, uh, who died in 330. Um, by the way, he was an assistant to Constantine, um, but I wouldn't hold that against him. He, he was apparently a good Christian. In, in his, the Divine Institutes, book four, chapter 15, he quotes the version of the baptism of Jesus' account, quote, then a voice from heaven was heard, thou art my son, today have I begotten thee which voice is found to have been foretold by David, and the Spirit of God descended upon him, formed after the appearance of a white dove. So that's definitely talking about the baptism account. So by 300 AD, it's clearly permeated to the point that he knows all about it. Okay, and then we get to 400 AD. This is the Codex Bizet. It dates to 400. Oldest, it's the oldest Bible, full Bible, mostly, has some damage. It is missing Matthew, by the way. It's uh, completely damaged in the section which would have had the baptismal account. Uh, it's the oldest unless the Sinaiticus truly predates it, which I mentioned earlier, I kind of am beginning to doubt. Quote, it has this day I have begotten thee. See George Hunston, Williams, Radical Reformation, Truman. And in footnote 42, he says, Thou art my son this day I have begotten thee. A wording that survives in the Codex Bize for Luke 3.22. The portion of Matthew 317 and Codex Bizet, the baptismal count, is entirely lost because pages covering Matthew 120 to 620 are entirely gone. What a shame. Okay, so that's the end of this episode. And next time we'll deal with the Ebionite confirmation of the earliest text of the uh, Luke and Matthew passages on the baptism. And we're, by looking at the Hebrew Matthew that these people relied upon, and this is truly our original church. So we're going to get a better picture and understanding of our original church. Anyway, I hope this is edifying and uh, helpful to everyone. And uh, well, God bless. Take care.